Welcome back to AfricaCom TV. We're of course at AfricaCom and Africa Tech. We are accelerating the enterprise digital transformation in Africa. I'm at RSA Web now and Mark Slingsby is the CEO. And Mark, thank you for having us over firstly. Thank you. And secondly, why are you at the Internet of Things this year? So we, uh, we developed a very interesting mobile data management platform uh, that really allows customers to to manage high volumes of SIMs, um, and, and it's both a broadband and an IoT management solution. Uh, we found customers that really struggled with, with deploying multiple devices and manufacturing thousands of devices a month, they really struggled to, to manage those, those SIM cards effectively, and uh, the new platform we've delivered uh, is enabling that for customers. Um, Laura Wan, what is that? <laughs> So, uh, it's a very interesting development. Uh, we've just launched our, our LoRaWAN network in South Africa. Uh, we've targeted uh, Cape Town for the initial launch, 95% uh, coverage already, uh, which is very exciting. Um, and, and really, we want to we reach those, those hard to reach places um, with uh, IoT devices um, and really allowing uh, IoT to, to uh, get access to, well, the battery tech and the and the, and the devices to uh, to scale. The problem we've we've had is that one of coverage, um, and and really just getting uh, devices out into the field, um, in especially remote and rural areas. And how are you addressing that out of interest? Uh, so we we have to uh, expand with the number of towers. We've got about ten around uh, Cape Town, um, and it requires a very similar model to a, a mobile strategy, where we have to set up a number of towers to to give us coverage. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting way of doing things um, and it's low power and it runs in the ISM band, so um, it's effectively easy for us to deploy. All right, and how does NBIOT compare? So NBIOT is, a, I would call it a, a middle ground between 4G, uh, 3G and, and, a, and a low power network. Um, so these low power networks, they, they don't use a lot of battery. Um, and you can create a device or build a device now that has 10 year life cycle with, with a single battery. So you don't have to go and replace the battery every six months or even run power to it or charge it. So it, it really gives you the ability to deploy something in a remote place like a manhole or a weather station on top of the mountain and you don't have to have power um, to, to drive that. Um, with NDIT though, it's a lot higher bandwidth, yeah. um, and you're looking at a few hundred kilobytes versus versus uh, this, you know, single-digit to multi-digit bytes uh, or double-digit bytes. And uh, really, the the big difference is that MBIT is going to give you um, a bit more throughput. Um, so it's great, but it's not ubiquitous everywhere. Um, and and so we've been struggling with uh, the use case for customers with MBIT because there just isn't the coverage, uh, especially in South Africa and Africa. In the rest of uh, Europe and, and the US, they've all turned on NBIOT networks, yeah. uh, but we just don't have that here yet. I believe it's coming, but we've been talking about it for two years. <laughs> <laughs> so we decided we were going to do it ourselves. Let's, let's do it ourselves. <laughs> uh, you are well placed to answer this question. What are some of the challenges that are being faced by businesses in the IoT space? So th there are a number of challenges, um, but those also present interesting opportunities. Um, NBIT coverage was, was specifically one of those challenges. Um, also device manufacturing um, and building an end-to-end -end platform. Uh, so you know, data acquisition right up at the, at the edge and bringing it all the way to an analytics platform that, that really made a lot of sense. Um, and really just uh, spanning all of those technologies and creating a solution for the customer at the end of the day uh, is really important and that's one of the challenges. Um, also manufacturing of devices um, and electronics. Uh, we've actually got a very well established electronics sector in South Africa um, and we've actually done a lot of the, the manufacturing in country, so it's been pretty powerful. Uh, one of the things that has come up time and time again at AfricaCom and Africa Tech is how localized some of the challenges are and how we need to actually look to local solutions mm. for those challenges. So how does the local market compare to the rest of the world? So we can easily get a device from Europe or, or whatnot on the LoRaWAN uh, specification, um, but localizing it for, for certain problems, uh, such as uh, solar panel theft um, and other kinds of uh, edge cases are, are really hard. So we've had to um, look at uh, partners that are building devices that are, let's call them uh, localized in a way where instead of it looking like a real IoT device, we really want to not make it look like anything. Yeah. It must be a little indiscreet box that yeah. sort of just sits in the corner 
um, and, and no one really wants to fiddle with it. So yeah, we, you know, those are the challenges, uh, one, some of the challenges. Yeah. And why did you pick LoRaWAN? So the, the interesting thing with LoRaWAN was that it's an open specification. Um, if you consider, let's call it a mobile network, 4G or 5G, those are open standards. So you can have any equipment manufacturer, um, any, uh, anyone with a uh, spe spectrum license, um, and any handset manufacturer. So it's really an open ecosystem. Now when you consider the other options in, in, in this space, uh, LoRaWAN was, was one that is very open. Um, the specification is, is uh, it, you know, can be changed by, by the people in the alliance. Um, and, and the comparison is like some of the other low power networks like a Sigfox or whatnot, they're very closed ecosystems. So we have no say in what's really going on in that space. Um, and if the company or the vendor chooses to change the model, well, what, is, what are you left with? Yeah. You're left, you're stuck. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we've seen uh, lots of uh, LoRaWAN deployments globally now, um, and, and we've seen some competitors do some seriously large uh, smart city deployments with, with um, thousands of devices and, and very successful implementations. So, uh, a very good standard, and I think one that we will stick with for now. An impossible question to ask, what's next in IoT? Ah, this is the fun one. <laughs> um, so, so, What's really interesting about LoRaWAN is that it has a maximum range of about 800 kilometers in the 800 megahertz band. And what that really means is that you can launch a low power satellite up to, let's say, a LEO orbit, which is about 400 kilometers up. Um, and so therefore you can actually reach those satellites from the ground with the same hardware that you can, that we were currently deploying. Wow. So it really enables um, global 24 seven coverage. Um, and these satellites, there have been a few test cases already launched, so they've proven the case, and now it's a question of building those networks out. And I think over the next year or two, those satellite networks are going to get, they're going to grow, um, and then we will see this ubiquitous 24 seven global coverage. Whether you're trying to do sea temperature and monitoring in the middle of the Atlantic um, and you know tracking some kind of climate change, or you want to monitor um, humidity and temperature on a farm in the middle of Rwanda, it's all going to be possible. My, my take from this mm. Africa Com for 2019 is that every single company here is looking to build a better digital future. Yes. How are you doing it? Oh, um, so I think we're, we're really just getting data into, into people's hands in a, in a consistent format. Um, and we're really allowing um, the, the customer to, to have intelligent systems using AI and, and other ML type tools they're actually going to be able to train their device or their systems to, to get these data feeds and these data inputs. Um, and really just make those experiences of, uh, you know, in a farming case, um, uh, the one example we, we like to talk about is a chicken farmer with, you know, 30 tunnels of chickens. That's, that's a lot of chickens, right? That's like 100,000 chickens. How do, you, how do you make his life better? And, and the problem they have is that if the temperature fluctuates too much in that yeah. tunnel, even over a three hour cycle, um, you know, a fan breaks or an air conditioning system breaks, um, you know, on the weekend, that means the guy can't go on holiday even. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, it's a simple thing, but it's, it's a really good example where um, you know early, you know what's happening, you don't have to have someone standing there monitoring that thing all the time at 3 a.m., you know, I'd rather get people to do the useful stuff than, than just the, the, the sort of, let's call it monitoring that the actual devices can do. It's all exciting, Mark. Thank you very much for joining cool. us at Africa.com. Mark Slingsby is the CEO of RSA Web.